Welcome to Brainish English Stories. Flori didn't know who she was when he came in. She stood up, her head down. He turned slowly, still holding the door handle, and their eyes met. His whole body tensed up, and his face, already pale from staying up late by his son's bed, turned even whiter. The woman looked at him with a pounding heart, hope, and fear in her eyes. You, he choked out. Jacqueline timidly took a small step towards him and clasped her hands. Yes, it's me. I, she started afraid. But the sound of her voice made the still figure at the door spring to life. Get out of this house, he said firmly, walking into the room. Louis, I leave right now, he interrupted, his voice getting louder with anger. Listen, Louis, please. I go. Can't you hear me? he shouted angrily as he walked past her opened the door to the hallway, and held it open for her to leave. Jacqueline moved towards him, looking up with a scared, tear-streaked face. Yes, yes. I'll go, I'll go, she said quickly. I, I promise I'll leave right now. But, please, Louis, just listen. One moment, please. He looked at her crouching, begging figure, and the anger on his face changed to an expression that's hard to describe, but impossible to forget, and he turned sharply away. Well, what is it then? Hurry up. What do you want? He asked roughly. She sank to her knees and reached out to him, pleading, Louis, please forgive me. For what? His voice surprised her like a sudden loud noise, but she kept on, stuttering. Forgive me, Louis, so? He slammed the door and quickly stood over her with fists clenched. She couldn't look into his angry eyes, and her head bowed almost to the ground. Forgive you. Forgive you. And he let out a short, bitter laugh that was worse than curses to the crouching woman. For two years I've thought about you with another man, giving him kisses that should have been mine. And you ask me to forgive you. You. Louis. Louis, she cried. For the sake of our child. Stop, he interrupted sternly. Don't mention him. He's nothing to you and you're nothing to him. He's mine, only mine. Did you even think of him when you left us? Louis, please. I was out of my mind. I. Oh, of course, he laughed harshly. That's what I expected. Then his face hardened, and he spoke harshly. I betrayed my husband. I left my child. I was out of my mind. I left my home secretly and took all its happiness with me. I was out of my mind. I ran away with my lover, thinking we'd have a happy life. I was out of my mind. I messed up everything, Louis. It's true. I was out of my mind. I. The truth. Ha. Huh. Do you want to hear the truth? You were tired of being faithful and being a good mother. You were tired of me and loved him. That's the truth. You loved him, didn't you? You loved him. He loved me. He said he'd do anything for me. And I. And you believed him. You never thought of me and I. For a moment grief overtook anger and his voice broke. I adored you, and we were supposed to be in love, he continued bitterly, because you once told me ages ago that you loved me. His face twisted in pain, and he tried to move away, but the woman held onto his trousers with both hands and looked up suddenly. 
and it's true, Lewis, she cried desperately. His expression said it all. It is. It is Lewis, she pleaded frantically. We didn't understand each other. That's all. It was my fault, my fault. You loved me deeply, but I didn't realize it. I couldn't see it. And you made me feel like I was just a part of your house, not part of your life. I was never your confidant. You were kind, but you never truly included me in your life. You never really understood my feelings, and with you, I always felt lonely. I loved you, but she struggled for breath and coherence. But I was always scared of you. You were so serious and strict. You never noticed. I wanted to have fun and laugh. You had your job, your goals, your lawyer friends, and I had nothing. Nothing, she sobbed. And I was so young, twenty, barely twenty. Oh, Louis, please forgive me. Please. Floriot stumbled to a chair and sat down heavily. The sudden, intense emotions of the scene, combined with the exhaustion from his two weeks of staying by his son's bedside, were almost too much for even his strong nerves to handle. Jacqueline, curled up on the floor, cried uncontrollably. He covered his face with his hands and groaned. At the sound, she struggled to her feet and took a step towards him, trying to calm herself. He gestured towards the door without lifting his head. Lewis, she cried passionately, desperately. You wouldn't condemn the worst criminal if there was any excuse for them, and I'm the mother of your child. It's all my fault, but you could have helped me if you wanted to. You promised to love, honor, and protect me. But did you? You loved me, but you didn't respect me. You didn't think I was worthy to be your true partner as a wife should be. You sought companionship from your friends. I might as well have been just your girlfriend. Did you protect me? You brought him into our home the first time? You said he was your friend, and you encouraged me to be nice to him. You allowed him to accompany me wherever I wanted to go because my happiness wouldn't get in the way of your work or plans. She choked up. Floriot didn't move. He became everything to me that you should have been. He understood me in every way. He knew what I needed before I even said it. You wouldn't even try to make me happy if it interfered with your work. Always your work. A life of fun, she said bitterly. Lewis, I never loved him. You upset me and hurt me because you didn't let me be a part of your real life. And I, I, Lewis, I was out of my mind. But you could have helped me. A little attention. If I could have felt like I meant more to you than just something to entertain you in the rare moments you took for fun. Lewis, you'll never know how much I struggled with myself, the pain of those days, and when I came to you for help. Her words trailed off into a sob. The only sound from her husband was the sound of his breathing. Do you remember a few days before, before, I, left. The night I left, I wanted you to go to Fontainebleau with me and you refused. And I went with him. That day in the park he kissed my hands and the lace of my dress and said he would kill himself at my feet if I didn't love him. She paused with a gasp and continued, speaking in broken phrases. I made him take me home. I was trying to get away from him, from myself, to you. I found you in your study and begged you to go out with me. I wanted to show you that I only loved you. Do you remember what you said? I'm too busy. Go and ask Lascelles to take you. 
Oh, Louis, Louis, she cried, throwing herself at his feet, while her tears shook her once again. You could have saved me then. But the person sitting in the chair didn't move. He felt so numb that it was like he was someone else, watching, listening, and judging. He was the kind of man who, once he committed to duty, held on to it tightly like a vice, finding some twisted pleasure in seeing life being squeezed out slowly. If she had come a month earlier, this scene wouldn't have shaken him. But now, his son, their son, was upstairs, saved from death by a miracle. Her hands were clasped on one of his knees, and her head was resting on his arm. His eyes were shut, but he almost fainted when he smelled the scent of her hair, reminding him of the image of her dark hair on the white pillow in the dim moonlight or the gray of dawn. Then the terrible thought came that for two years that image had been the happiness of someone else. Bits of his conversation with Madame Varin came back to him. Was there a little fault on his side? He didn't need to say anything. If he just opened his eyes and forgave her, she would be pressed against him again, her arms around his neck and her lips showering kisses on his face. He took a sharp breath and stood up slowly and uncertainly. Jacqueline, he said in a shaky voice, not daring to look down with his wavering eyes. Jacqueline, you have to leave. A long, desperate sob and, why did I leave it all? Why did I ever leave? She cried. You would have killed me, and that would have been it. Louis. Forgive me. Forgive me. And she held his limp hand in both of hers, looking up with pleading eyes. No. No, he cried, struggling against the urge to embrace her slender body and kiss away her tears. Can't you see that I? What will happen to me? She begged, sensing that he was wavering. Go back to him. Go back to the man who said he would kill himself for you, he said, trying to make his voice as bitter as his words. And he didn't try to pull his hand away. She whispered barely audibly, He's dead. Floriot jerked his hand away with horror and stepped back, his eyes blazing with anger. So that's why you've come back, he yelled furiously. Get out of the house. The intense scorn in his eyes made her freeze. And I was about to give in. His laugh made her flinch. What a fool I was. I actually believed you. So he's dead. Huh? She hung her head in despair. I wrote, to let you know. And now that he's gone, you think of me again. Of me? Your dumb husband. His voice rose in fury. The gullible fool who would gladly take you back. Louis, I love you. I wanted to see you. To see our child again. Can't you see I've changed? She begged. She opened her arms wide. Tears streaming down her face. Changed. Ha! Get out of the house and he pointed firmly to the door. Louis, it's true. Let me see our boy again. He doesn't remember you. Let me give him a kiss. Just one, she pleaded. He thinks you're dead, he said, coldly cruel. The mother rushed to him, half screaming with terror on her face. Louis. No. No. She screamed, No! 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 He does. Louis, no! Don't say that. Horror was pushing her towards hysteria. It can't be true. You wouldn't tell him that. Louis, you loved me once. You loved me. 
It's not possible. I am your wife. His mother. His mother. Floriot looked at her, cold and unmoved. You've left his life and mine, he said calmly. Jacqueline moaned and sank to the floor. Oh, my God, she prayed. Help me. Help me. Louis, be kind to me. I'll spend my life regretting. He pulled her roughly to her feet and half dragged her towards the door. Don't take my child away from me, she gasped, struggling. Go. Get out of the house. Oh, let me see him. I won't. Speak. Let me give him a kiss. I won't. Say a word. She gasped as they reached the door, and he pushed her forcefully out into the hallway. Lewis, have pity. Raymond, my child, my. The door slammed shut, cutting off her pleading voice. He held on to the knob to keep her from opening it again. For a few moments, there was silence. Then Flori had heard through the door a mix of choking and sobbing, followed by the sound of retreating footsteps. The bang of the outside door echoed through the silent house.